So now we have a peak function. We can adjust print matches to, as well as printing the address, actually print the, the value at that location. So we can we print it like that. So we'll print the hex out and then it's decimal equivalent. So we need a address is this. So now we've got our value, we can just print it out twice, once in hex, once in decimal. So we can recompile this now. Warning 272 I suspect that it's because it's a pointer, but my function takes it as an int. There we go. So if we rerun our tester from the start, get its new PID, 8100. There we go, so it's also printing out the contents at the location now. We're all a thousand and presumably that's the hex for a thousand. And we'll change it to 999 as before. And now it's printing the values out as well. So to make our memory scanner complete we just need to implement a simple console user interface for the scanner rather than hard coding a test. So to make our interface, we're first going to make a little utility function called string to int, which will, as it suggests, take a string and convert it to an integer. The reason we're making a separate function and not just using the built-in C uh, facilities to do that is we can make one function deal with hex and decimal. What we're going to do is, if the user enters a number like that, you assume it's decimal, if they prefix it with a 0x, assume it's hex. So let's check the first and second characters of the string. If they're 0x, then change our base to 16 and move past the two 0x characters. And now we can use the built in C functionality to convert it to an integer. So that will be handy for the rest of the UI because now we just have one function that we can call regardless of whether we want hex or decimal. So the first UI function we're going to need is to make a new scan. So we'll make it return a linked list and we'll call it UI new scan. and we'll have a pointer to our new scan which will start as null and this is the process ID previously we were passing it into main via the command line now we're going to actually prompt the user for it and the data size 1, 2 or 4 the start value in the case where we're starting the search by looking for a particular match and the start condition. So at the start you can either look for a specific value or just have the unconditional condition where you read in the entire block of memory and a little buffer for the input. So we'll spin round until we are successful in making a new scan. So we'll prompt the user enter the PID and we use fgets because it's safer than just gets.
because you can specify how big your buffer is. We're reading from the console. And now we can use our string to int function with s. And now we want to get the data size. So and again get the input and use our converter. Now a prompt for the starting value if there is one. So we'll enter the start value or U for unknown. So again, we'll get the input and we'll test the first character of the input. If it's U for unknown, then our start condition is the unconditional as in we're not searching for a particular value, we're just going to read in everything so start value is meaningless in this case but we'll just set it to zero otherwise we have a valid start condition which is equals and the start value is what the user entered so now we have all the data we need from the user we can go ahead and create the scan so we call our create scan which is based on the PID and the data size and if scan is not null then we'll break out because we successfully managed to create the scan otherwise we'll just tell the user something went wrong We'll just say invalid scan, at which point it will loop around to the top and prompt the user for a fresh set of data. So if we get this far, we've made a scan. So now we can update the scan with our start condition and our start value. So that will, if the condition is unconditional, it will read in the entire memory contents ready for searching or it, if the condition is an equals it will already filter on this particular value the start value and after the initial scan or the initial update rather we'll, we'll print out how many matches we found so if you remember previously we made a function called get match count which just tallied up the complete match count for an, a linked list or a full scan so now we can use that before returning the newly created scan to our caller the next UI function we need is called UI poke which is just a wrap around our poke function that will prompt the user for an address and some data so we need the handle to the process that we're poking and the size of the poke so we will declare the address and a value to poke and some string for our input so we'll prompt for the address first again use fgets and our string conversion then get the value a new line here 
and then we can just forward the information onto our poke function. So just forward on the handle and the size plus the address and value that we've just prompted the user for. So that's UI poke.